the kind of reform that's needed, in my view, is to junk the entire federal rules of civil procedure. It's interesting that 40 years ago, man landed on the moon. Our country set us a, a, a goal to do that after uh, the Russian, was it Gagorin, I think his name was, orbited the Earth once and the space race started. And we put, within a very short period of time, uh, a man on the moon. And we did that, why? By coming up with brand new technologies, with designs from the best thinkers in, in the area of science and technology that were available. We could do that with our legal system. We could do that with our legislative system. And we could do it with government as a whole. But we have it. We have it. We are depending more and more on administrative regulation and administrative remedies where a person really isn't heard. The government just says this is what will happen. So what's at stake? Our freedom. What's at stake? Our justice. Uh, I think the best definition of justice is uh, from the, the Greek, uh, classical Greek word for it, which is the same, the synonym for out of balance. Injustice is something's out of balance. And justice is when whatever it is is put back into balance. It's the Aristotelian concept of putting things in order, the golden mean you probably remember from school. And that's the kind of, of system that we have which is in balance, not one that caters to a very small minority of lawyers who are getting rich off of depositions and flying around the country and doing all this. The majority of lawyers are hurting because they can't get their clients into court. And I'm always amused by uh, legal education when they talk about somebody's in the top 10% of their class. Well, what happened to the other 90? What happened to, you know, if you have an average, half of the people are below average. What happens to them? Where do they go? How do they practice law? They're not charging $1,000 an hour as a Wall Street lawyer might. They're lucky if they're getting $30,000 a year in income, some of them. So they're not making it. It's not a conspiracy of lawyers that are doing uh, th this to our system. It's, it's permeated with, with problems. And I think we need an entirely new design, an entirely new concept. And the concept that I would suggest is one that would, first of all, get rid of all of this discovery, the cost, the great cost, which means that you have to get rid of notice pleading, just giving notice you're going to sue. It would mean that you would have to plead with particularity what your complaint's about, and then the other side, instead of just denying it, would have to say, oh no, it didn't happen the way you said it happened, it happened this way. And so, but we've done it by half measures. The reforms some cases have to be pled with particularity, but others don't. And no answer has to be pled with particularity. If you're suing somebody for libel, for defaming you, or for committing fraud on you, you have to plead that with particularity. But if it's just an ordinary kind of breach of contract, or an ordinary automobile accident case, or a suit against a manufacturer for a defective product, you don't have to plead those things with particularity. And if you do, and you're more specific about it, the defense comes back and says, we deny it. But they don't tell you how they did it. You know, how did you design this car so that it explodes whenever it's rear-ended? They don't come forward with that evidence. You have to go in and find it. And the courts are busy with what are called discovery disputes, fighting this kind of thing all the time. So the first thing I say would, would be to get rid of uh, the notice pleading concept and require everybody to set forth narrative of, of what happened and what they're looking for. And the other side comes back. And then you can pinpoint the things that they agree upon and the things they disagree upon, and you can have a means of deciding the issues 
that is those in which there is no agreement. But you don't have to do it all in one trial the way we do now. Five and a half months of trial, that's absurd. Nobody, I, I was there and I think I'm smarter than the average bear. I studied hard and worked on it, but I don't really understand five and a half months of testimony about plutonium pollution. I mean, we had experts, PhDs in nuclear physics, and they only understood part of it. So why would we attempt to put all of that into one huge uh, Cuisinart? That's what, that's what we're doing today. And I think we need to change, we need to change that. Another thing we need to change, uh, after you plead with particularity and then we, and voluntary disclosure, is we need to change the form of a trial. There's no reason why we should be trying cases the same way they did in the days of Henry IV. It's ridiculous. I use telephone conferencing, video conferencing, all the technology that is presently available, and I have no idea what technology is going to be available in the future. Why can't we, instead of having judges like me who look to the past to see what was done, get some futurists involved in this to see what's going to happen and design a, a, a system that is able to incorporate new developments in technology. We can do that. We have the, we have the, the minds to do this. We've got to do a couple of things. One, we have to escape from the confines of the law school, the le and I don't mean just any law school, but the legal academy. We have to escape uh, from having commercial interests drive everything that we do and we have to go into a number of disciplines and make a cross interdisciplinary approach to solving uh, these problems. 